Let me ask you, Kevin. I asked Ravi off air and kind of at the tail end of, of BC. We 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 talk a ton of offense, but you know, defensively, it's like okay, these guys weren't playing, and we got to get these guys healthy and man this secondary. Are you ready to set an expectation level for Nebraska defensively based on them saying they want to be the best defense in the country, putting up some pretty gaudy numbers? What? Are, where are you kind of with rationalizing the? the statistic possibilities of that going into next season. It's hard to set an expectation without seeing it. And right. we really didn't see it on Saturday, especially with the green, no contactors, because one of the things that mm. Nebraska wants to do defensively with the, with improvement in mind is to get to the quarterback. You know, last year, the pass rush was okay, maybe a little subpar. And, and that's a huge area of growth. And how much can you even really do that when the green no contact jersey is on and not to mention you don't have nash playing up front you don't have ty robinson playing up front buford's not playing on the back end your uh, tackles Hart for a loss running. leader didn't play in jamari butler yeah exactly so you know if you if you're asking me to zone in on the defense i really don't even have a takeaway from what i saw mm. on saturday and that's fine with yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, how does it trans? How does it translate to the fall and what I'm going to expect of them? Uh, I've got to go off of words right now. I'd rather go off of my eyes, and unfortunately, we can't really do that until August. Kevin, do you think they could be a more effective defense while having some of those metrics slip from last year? Like maybe they give up more rushing yards per game, but they get off the field on third downs a little bit better, mm, or good, good maybe they give up a little bit more in the passing game, but they're getting more takeaways. Like, is that maybe a more realistic possibility than us just thinking, oh, well, it's another year in Tony White's defense. They're going to be better across the board. Yeah, great point. Great question, Ravi. Um, yeah, the, the numbers sometimes they can always, you can spin them however you want. What I'm more interested in defensively is if you're going to limit a, a big drive or, or limit, when does it happen? You know, mm. if you're making stops mid first quarter, okay, that that's good for the numbers. But can you get off the field in crunch time when you need to get the offense the ball back? Mm. So I, I guess to answer your question, I'm with you on the numbers are the numbers. You don't have to be the number one defense in the country. You just have to be good when it matters most. And the takeaways thing that's that's pretty big. Yeah. Um, can they get the ball back and? and try to play the numbers games that way, like a possessions game. Uh, and if you can swing that, it's definitely going to increase your chance of victories this upcoming fall. Yeah, I love the, that's, I love the question and kind of the give and take because, remember, we, we've forgotten because Coach Rule, there, there's such tremendous trust. There were so many little things in game that drove us crazy last year. And I'm wondering – if all things stay the same, where will our margin of error be? Will it be less? Will it be more? You know what I mean? It's like, should they have used a timeout there or attempt this or that play called? There were these little finite things that happened within a pretty statistically good defensive performance. I I, I do out loud now wonder where the give and take will be with, with some of those statistical numbers. But it's a dance, right? You know, it's not just all on the defense. The defense looks better when the offense is playing better. And the defense looks better when the offense can score, you know, late in the game. Uh, so uh, the numbers do look good defensively from a year ago. Uh, but can the offense capitalize? And I think that what we saw on Saturday in the red-white scrimmage is this offense seems to me hate to make too much out of one big scrimmage but I think they might be a little bit more opportunistic, and I think they have better big play potential, and they could possibly score at a higher clip when when you know the pressure is on late in the game. If and if nothing else, Kevin, just hold the ball longer, right? You you yeah. you average having less than six plays per drive last year. It, so just think about how if you if you hold the ball another three or four plays per drive longer, how much more fresh your defense could be later on. I, I agree with you completely about the, the complimentary thing. Just maybe they're not on the field as much. And possibly it's just get a little bit deeper on a drive to milk the clock late in the game when you have a lead 
or get deeper on a drive to shorten a field goal attempt. Instead mm. of trying to kick from 45, can you kick from 30? And yeah. I think that those little things, um, you know, we might find out at the at the end of the 2024 campaign that t- five and seven in 2023 was actually really close to eight and four. We we don't know, but maybe this upcoming season will show you, as you mentioned, DB, that the margin of error, um, you know, it, it it might be completely different this year, and it yeah. might tell you that the players from last year's team that return still really good players it's just those fleeting moments seem to pass nebraska by we're talking with kevin suits from 10 11 news in lincoln um i mean kevin we do kind of know though right like we we do know that it was pretty close to eight and four like we saw it <laughs> right like i mean we, we do kind of know he keeps trying to convince me of that kevin i don't I, know let me ask you this though because <laughs> I, i'm not going to throw the dylan rail thing out there but if we had seen... Oh, I want you to throw the Dylan Royal <laughs> thing out there. Let's go. I... Well, I've got... I think this question is more interesting. If it's not, you can just turn it into a Dylan Royal answer anyway. <laughs> That's fine. Um, if we had seen the version of Heinrich Harburg we saw on Saturday, mm. all season last year, we probably are talking about a seven or eight win team, right? Is that an exaggeration or do you think that's close? I think that's totally fair. And, and give me Heinrich Harburg throughout the entire season. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The whole, the all twelve. Yeah, I, I think that saying that Heinrich Harburg would have led Nebraska to eight wins on the version of Heinrich Harburg we saw on Saturday, I, I, I think that's pretty reasonable. What you just said, Robbie. I, I isn't it weird, Kevin? And I was harping on this Monday because I just like the guys behind the scenes as a trio. When you get the the unselfishness and and work ethic of of Rayola, you get the the I'm a team first guy in Danny Kalen and Harburg's I'm I'm gonna work my tail off regardless of of who's in front of me. Kind of when you get the mentality of that quarterback room right, how much of that do you think leads to optimism? Because it appears to be a well oiled machine emotionally. And I think that starts at the top. You know, that only uh, works, point. those personalities only work if you have the right quarterback coach and you have the right head coach, because you have to manage that situation very delicately. Good point. You know, it, it doesn't always work, but if you're able to continue to motivate each of those guys and also make sure each of those quarterbacks, which is such a highly competitive position by nature, if you can get them to buy into the overarching theme of the team of, we're, we're, yes, we're competing, but we want what is best for everybody. Mm. I mean, it takes a special leader to do that. And I think Nebraska maybe has the right guy to manage a situation like they have right now. Because I think in a lot of instances, when you have the talent of Riola and you have the homegrown blue collar guy like Heinrich Harburg, and you got a Danny Kalen who just, you know, all American guy, like it, sometimes that leads to, I want to leave, I want to leave. Oh, I guess you're it. But I don't know that, that, that that's not what's happening at Nebraska. And I think you can trace it all the way up uh, to the front office with Matt Rule. Mm.